We're live. Hey, everybody. How is everybody? Happy holidays. And uh, Christmas is a week away and Happy New Year. You have found your way to Janine and Amy's Travel Experiences Travel TV Live Show, the last one of the year for 2020. And we're super happy you have joined us today. Thank you so much. And I hope your holiday season so far is going really well. So a couple questions for you. Have you ever wondered what a river cruise through Europe was really like? Have you ever wondered or wanted to go on a Christmas markets river cruise? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Indeed. You have to wonder. Wow. I will tell you right now. Yes. <laughs> the answer is yes. So if you said yes and heck yeah, that's what I want to do. You are in luck. We have our very, very, very good friend, Kathy Brock, and she works for Ama Waterways, the illustrious luxury river cruise line. And she has decided to join us today. But before we go over to Kathy, I have to say hello to my dear, dear friend and partner, Janine Queen. And hey, Janine. Hi, Amy. So um, if you're in the Northeast, you know you got a lot of snow. You have a lot of snow in your yard, and I've been spending the whole day cleaning up. What about you, Amy? Oh what my goodness, you? no, not in my neighborhood because we have we have people. <laughs> <laughs> it's really we do. We, do. we live I, in my community, I and it's my 16 year old son. Teenager. I knew that's what you were gonna say, but we live in a in a community and we pay really hefty HOA fees. So uh, they're out there still working, cleaning out. Uh, so that's why we one of the reasons why we moved here is I don't have to do these things in order for my husband anymore. But we were outside walking through our new neighborhood, singing Christmas carols. Very nice. Very yeah, nice. it was beautiful. It was fun. So Kathy, thank you so much for coming. And I'm really excited because I have never been number one on a river cruise or number two to the Christmas markets. So I love Europe and I, I've been to Europe a, a whole bunch of times. So I'm really, really excited to learn about this. And, you, you know, going forward, making a plan to get there myself. So I can't wait to hear about it. But we always ask our guests the same question every week. If, well, first I want to know, are you traveling, Kathy, or are you still on hold? And if you're on hold, where do you want to go as soon as you can, as soon as the world opens up again? Absolutely. Uh, we actually did operate a ship on the Rhine River from July 1st through into November for five wow. months. <gasps> so this is a company that is not just talking about the protocols that need to be done when we get back to sailing, we actually did it. We sailed for five months with European guests and there were no incidences whatsoever. So oh, we Kathy, that's awesome. For when they let us back. Now, for us, the contingency is the European Union. Americans in the EU. As soon as that happens, now we don't typically sail until mid-March. So, you know, even if they opened in February, we wouldn't be there yet. So mid-March through New Year's Eve is our season. And we can, we have the ships ready. Uh, we can sail within three days of when they open the gates. That's so, amazing. We've already done it. Now, when is that gonna be? I dropped that crystal ball. <laughs> no idea. What? Put it back together. Oh, come on. I was counting on you, Kathy. <laughs> That's why we're having you on. <laughs> Two of our owners, uh, we're a family owned company, only three families own on the waterways. Um, Rudy, our owner architect, is from uh, Vienna, Austria, oh. uh, one who designs the ships and itineraries. And uh, Christine, who's the heart of Alma Waterways, came from Dresden, Germany, where her family still lives. Now, those two have a bet going. So it's kind of weekly. When do you think? When do you think? Well, Christine's saying April, but Rudy's a little more conservative and he's saying summer. Uh, we just, we're gonna be ready um, to put a deposit down to hold, to reserve a space on anything in 2021 or 2022 
the deposit is $400 per person. And then there's nothing else due until 90 days from the sailing. Wow, that's so amazing. They wanted to book a Christmas market cruise, Thanksgiving 2021, 27th, 28th of, of November. After you reserve your cabin with that $400, there's nothing else due until 90 days before, which is, I believe, October of either 2021 or 2022. Mm -hmm. And Christmas markets are just going crazy. They have never sold this well before. So that's amazing. So Kathy, what, so first of all, Vanessa McGovern is on and she's saying hello to all of us. And she Hi. desperately, I don't know if you can see this Janine, but um, I don't know if it's on mine or yours, but she said, hi everybody. And she desperately wants to go on a Christmas cruise, Christmas Marcus cruise on the Alma Magna. So, uh, oh. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So uh, Vanessa, how you doing? Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. So it's good to see you. Well, maybe so, tell us really quickly what the Magna is, the Ama Magna. Yeah, tell us. Well, the normal river cruise ship is 38 feet wide and we put only 156 people on it. So if you see the word cruise and you freak, freak out because you're thinking thousands of people, and international borders, that doesn't happen on a river cruise. We're 156 people. But last year, Rudy designed a new ship that can sail from the bottom of the Main Danube Canal, which is north of Vienna, all the way down to the Black Sea, mm. because the locks that you go through there take two ships side by side. So Rudy mm. needs to build, well, we're, I'm from the south. <laughs> I call her a double wide. You might not get it, but in the state, <laughs> you know what a double wide is. <laughs> so instead of 38 feet wide, she's 72 feet wide, but she only carries 196 passengers. That's wow. the same number of passengers that Viking puts on their regular size ship. So mm -hmm. huge space, four restaurants, five wine bars, and average cabin size, 355 square feet. So if you have in your head that river cruise ships are going to be smaller staterooms, we just blew that one away. Yeah, That's you did. Mama Magna. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. So on a Christmas markets river cruise, Kath, what is a typical itinerary? Can you kind of just paint us a beautiful picture of what that looks like and the stops that you make? Can you do that for us, please, in this beautiful Christmas season? Oh, I've only done it seven times. <laughs> and I'm really bitter about missing number eight this year. So next mm -hmm. year, maybe I'll have to do back to back. So oh, are, they, are they open? Are they open now? Are the Christmas markets? No. I no so. Most of them are not, but. Mm -hmm. Americans can't get in, mm. so it doesn't matter. So, anyway. Right, that's true. Um, yeah. The Christmas markets open based on Advent, about the 24th or 25th of November. So you don't have to travel over Christmas. Now, we um, the Vienna market last year opened on the 15th of November, and fabulous Budapest opened on the 9th. So we currently... Um, you're going to stop in all of these little ports along the way. Typically, you're going to walk off the ship and do walking tours, bicycle tours, hiking tours, or culinary tours, because they're all included. Again, very unlike the big ships. So we would dock in a port. And if it's not a scenic area, we're going to move the ship overnight. So that's basically you're checking into a little luxury hotel room. And every night, that hotel room is going to move and you're going to wake up in a different city or town. We will go out on a walking tour or a city tour in the morning. Uh, we Then you'd have free time. Of course, the Christmas markets are so fabulous. Every city, every town, even every village, Germany, Austria, Switzerland, France, Czech Republic, Hungary, they all have Christmas markets. The Christmas market tradition goes back seven to 900 years. Oh my this golly. Locals come out. They'll stand in front of the market stall with that hot mulled wine in the little souvenir <laughs> mug. <laughs> the boot. From the giant <laughs> boot. Souvenir mug. <laughs> this is one from Vienna. 
Oh, such a beautiful city. This is from Nuremberg. Oh, another beautiful city. And this one's from fabulous Regensburg. Wow. Behind me, there are 12 more. I have to yes. ask, I have to, do you have a favorite or is it too hard to, do you have a favorite? I want to know, just between the three of us. <laughs> do you yeah, have just between the three. Oh, Regensburg. Regensburg, yeah. Regensburg has a regular market in the city center. They also have a market, a medieval market, up at the palace above the town. Wow. The palace is lived in, but at Christmas time, the family that owns it, turns in Texas, turns it over to the town for a medieval Christmas market. Wow. You walk up this path to get up to the, the, the castle and it's lined with torches and campfires and you go into the courtyard and there's an outdoor bread oven. The street food is fabulous at all the Christmas markets. There's a blacksmith there. There's that <laughs> hat maker. From there you go. <laughs> uh, all of that is right there and you just enjoy the magic of the Christmas markets. Every market has its own flavor. Uh, it's very much of a local thing. People come out, stand in front of those market stalls with their families. Um, the, the drink that they serve is called Glühwein and it's a hot mulled wine. Usually oh. has red wine, maybe a little brandy and some fruits and spices in it. I but like wine. <laughs> always have hot chocolate, hot punch, or um, hot cider, and each market has its own signature Christmas market mug. Now, and is so the mug different every year? Every market is different and different every year. Yes. Ah, got it. Okay, good. Um, and you, we'll usually give you a coupon to get your first cup of glue vine. Mm -hmm. and if you don't want to keep the mug, you simply take the mug back and they give you back like a euro. But oh. you want to bring some home. Trust me. Yes. Yeah, I would think so. Year, the rest of your life, every time you pull these mugs out, the memories yeah. are just flood back. So, you know, you know, every time my husband and I travel, everywhere we go, I always buy a coffee mug and I try to find the most unique, not one that says Bahamas on it. Right? Not Starbucks, are you? I to find, right. I try to find one that is truly unique and maybe artesian or made by somebody that's an artesian, something like that. So I have this whole cupboard full of all these mugs and exactly right, Kath. Every time I pull a mug out and I open up my cupboard, I'm like, where do I want to go this morning? Oh, I'm feeling like I want to go back to Dublin, right? So yeah, then I pull yeah. the Dublin mug out for St. Patrick's Cathedral or whatever. So I do the, oh, it's fabulous. You're absolutely right. It takes you back as you're sipping your coffee or, you know, your wine. <laughs> I never have wine in a coffee cup, but I might start. <laughs> then you're going to like my hopeful hint. Ooh, what's your hopeful hint? Never travel without bubble wrap and duct tape. Oh. Yeah. Things home. Yes, that's a great tip. That's yeah, a great that's tip, Janine. Tuesday's tip. Tuesday's tip, dude. That's it. Tip. I love it. Buy a roll of bubble wrap from Staples. Mm -hmm. Cut the bubble wrap to fit the bottom of your suitcase. You put in five or six layers. Doesn't add anything. And you throw in a roll of duct tape. You can get anything home. <laughs> And like you can you can bind a wound too. And, and everything goes when you have duct tape. I mean, come oh, on, duct tape you know that, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's almost like you've traveled with me before, Jenny. <laughs> so I want to say hi to Emer. Hey Emer, we're so glad that you're here. Hey, Emer. So I have a question. So from what you're saying, people should should understand that it's really local people with their crafts and things. It's not much of tchotchkes. It's not like made for tourists. It's really this tradition and that every year it's something like amazing that you get to experience. So it's not put on for the tourists, right? Yeah. It's, it's very much of a local thing. Each market has its own flavor and the street food is amazing. I bet. Uh, in Hungary, they have something called Lengos. Lengos is a 
uh, puff pastry uh, the size of like two of your hands and they drop it in hot oil. Nice. When it comes out, they smear sour cream with garlic on it. They pile it up with cheese. And as you walk through the market, the cheese melts and it's just amazing. You're going to walk through with your Christmas market mug in one hand and maybe one of those fabulous sausages in those. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's really good. Yeah. 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 So, you had me a puff pastry, so it's all good. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, I think we're going, Amy. I think this might be on the list. I think it's got to be a thing. I think it's got to be a thing. Kathy, what's the weather like during that time? So it runs in early to mid-November, you're saying, till when, and then what is the weather like? Layers. That's yeah. always layers. Uh, you can put on three thin layers and be warmer than one thick layer because each layer traps the, the heat between it. Yeah. So, um, I always say, don't pack a hat or a scarf, buy it in the first market and oh. then wear it the rest of the week. And then just like the mugs, every time you pull out that, uh, hat and that scarf, which we could yeah. be doing right now, again, the memories yeah. are just going to flood back. Yeah. Oh, that, what a great, that's another great tip. Holy cow. It's awesome. Is it yeah. cold and snowy? Will it snow and done it seven times? Only seen snow once. Really? Yeah. Huh. So I just have to say, Eva loves chimney cake, which I'd like to know what that is. And Laura yeah. said, then we can use you can use the bubble wrap to wrap your body and sweat out the calories from all the great food. <laughs> oh, that'd be a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. So this is just but, like tip but, but, Thursday. We have all but, the tips. But you don't gain weight on a river cruise because you're walking so much. Right. Of right. course. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I have a Tradelnik, a chimney cake, every single day. Nice. That's okay, right. so what is a chimney cake, Kathy? You got to tell us what a chimney you. cake is, because now I have pastry puffs in my face, and now <laughs> no, no, this one. Okay, um, they they roll out a sweet dough oh. in about this size, long strand like that. Okay, then they wrap that sweet dough around a metal dowel. All right, then they run that dowel turning over hot coals oh, wow. and it roasts it as it goes along. When it gets to the end, they slide it off and roll it in cinnamon sugar and crust walnuts. How did I know that's what she was gonna say? And it spiraled, <laughs> so you pull it apart as you walk. Nice, oh, that sounds yummy. Okay, so so Janine, when we do this, we're gonna have to lose like twenty pounds before we go, so we can gain it all back in, in one week. <laughs> we're walking, we're walking, so we're walking, we're, and you're gonna do yoga with me, and we're gonna be great. So exactly, I've, I've only gained weight on one river cruise. Okay, and why? Why? It was the year I had as a goal to have a sausage in every port. Oh. <laughs> 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 I want to say I have a goal of having a sausage in every port, but I think we're talking about different things. <laughs> oh. Sassy. This is sassy. I am sassy. I am sassy. This is Carol walked in it. So then we asked about the weather because that was one of my questions too. Like, uh, if it's too cold to do things. So I know in the summer, AMA offers you can bike ride, you have all these outdoor activities. So what kind of activities are included in the winter? I mean, you, you said you do a tour, right? And you, and, and you brought up to the Christmas markets. What other things are available during the winter months? Walking tours are regular pace, active pace, and gentle pace. So you can pick. Yes, every day you can change your mind, okay? <laughs> uh, we also do the bike tours, weather permitting. Okay. Every Christmas market cruise I've been on in the last few days, the bikes have gone out. They are paved bike paths that line the rivers. Think about it, they were the original tow paths to pull the barges along the rivers. Oh. Hiking and biking paths. So, That's so cool. Uh, it, it, it's, just, it, it's just an incredible experience. All of the places in Europe, like Prague and Vienna, they are absolutely beautiful cities. Yeah, but they are. turn to magic 
at Christmas time. Oh, Christmas. They were magic in the summer, Kath. When I saw them, I, we were there in the summer, and they were magic then. And I'm envisioning the same cities that you're talking about at Christmas time. And I, I couldn't. My my brain would blow up. I can't even imagine. That's amazing. Yeah, so, it's the most beautiful city in the world at Christmas time. Yeah. Oh, it's Every a pretty city. Anyway, street is decorated differently. There's one street that is nothing but huge chandeliers wow. all the way down the street. The oh next my God. street over is waterfall lights. The next street over is these huge red glistening ornament balls. It is just so beautiful it's beyond words. I'm addicted. I will go every year if they'll let me. Absolutely. So, a question for you. Um, Roseanne is asking, first of all, she said she's so dying right now for all these foods, and I agree. <laughs> but she was wondering, did you mention, I don't think you did, with the earliest date the market's open in the fall? Uh, the Danube, they're going to open a little bit earlier. Because like I say, Vienna last year was the 15th, and Budapest was the 9th. But typically, they're going to open based on Advent, which is about the 24th or 25th of November. Uh -huh. So if you're going over Thanksgiving, or after, then your chances are really good. A little bit later on the Rhine, based strictly on that 24th or 25th of November. So when is the, is there a best time to go then? Is it, are there cruises that are more crowded that get filled up faster or is it just, it's all good? It's all good. <laughs> it really is all good. Um, last year, when we were doing the transfer from uh, the little town in Germany where the ship docks um, by land transferring to Prague, it dusted snow after we got to Prague. So oh my we golly. We were of the Prague castle and it was just dusted with snow everywhere. It's just so beautiful. We're getting a ton, oh my goodness. We're getting a ton of amazing Oh, it's all good. It's best. We rode bikes, no problem. And we got a good Lord, Amy, from Vanessa. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I don't know why anybody would be surprised. <laughs> no, I think that's funny. <laughs> awesome. Any questions, Janine? I know I, I know um I'm doing a watch in um, a watch show and um everybody's like giving me the face, you know, like, oh, oh yeah, I want to go. Oh, so it's amazing. More practical questions. So before we get on the show, you were telling us that 2020, 2021 is really looking like a busy year. So if you want to go, when should you plan? When should you book it? Like, is it a full year? Is it more than a year? What do you think? Sign language for now. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, the deposit is only the $400. Nothing else due until 90 days from sailing. Right now, the Christmas markets for 2021 and 2022 are what we call triple savings. So it's $1,000 off per person. It's a shipboard upgrade and it's a shipboard credit. So pick a date make it happen have something on your calendar to look forward absolutely. to absolutely yeah wow that is think an amazing that's deal. deal that's think, an amazing deal think, think beyond sure. think beyond where we are right now mm -hmm. put something on that calendar i just did a presentation with todd from ama and we were presenting both egypt and africa oh wow. see, egypt, egypt is at my on my list now oh my gosh he was coming up with videos to watch uh, movies on netflix all of this thing put it on your calendar then start reading books then start watching movies listen to the music research it look at recipes uh get a recipe for glue vine yeah. the total wine um <laughs> so, participate so and, let me ask you a practical question because I, in my bones, know that we will be traveling by this fall. I just, in my bones. Oh, but yeah, just by in summer. case something happens, which is not going to, what, what is the policy for in terms of rescheduling and things like that? What is AMA's policy if something does happen? 
what we did this past year is if we had to suspend, they don't like the word cancel. Uh -uh. The word was suspend. If we had to suspend a sailing, we did it 40, 45 days out. And then we offered the guest a future cruise credit of 115%. Wow. So it's the cost of the cruise plus 15%. You can get that interest in any bank out there. And then it was good for two years. Wow. That's amazing. That's awesome. So you could yeah. upgrade. You could even upgrade if you needed to reschedule. So that's pretty cool. The trend, we're seeing three trends right now coming out of this. Number, number one, first trend is people are going to want to do longer vacations. After all, they missed their vacation totally this right. year. Absolutely. So why not make the next one twice as long? Absolutely. Two, they don't want any fixed window cabins. They all want to have a balcony. Yes. And number three, it's definitely going to be multi-generational. Uh, travel Time with family. Your grandkids, your nieces, your nephews. Yep. I don't know if my daughter knows it or not, but those eight-year-old twins are going with me next year. Good. I am yeah. too, you know. <laughs> there we go. So there are cruises with kids on it. There are river cruises. Like families should feel comfortable booking a cruise with kids and things. Are there, are there specific cruises or all of them? Well, you know, we're par partnered with Adventures by Disney. Oh, nice. Is that a I family? didn't even know that. That is. We now have six ships next year. It'll be eight ships that have connecting cabins. Wow. They have triple cabins, a third person, and they have suites that will accommodate a family of four. Now, oh, wow. they, tend, they tend to be very well-traveled and well-behaved uh -huh. kids. Oh, Plus, yeah. they've been watched by every grandparent on the ship. That's my yeah. All right. Um, I've never seen more than one family at a time. Typically, vacation time, but... Who knows what that's going to be coming out of this and Christmas markets. But I myself have not had more than one family at a time on a ship. Yeah. Yeah. I think a misnomer for river cruises is that it's for um, more seasoned travelers to put it mildly, trying to be very politically correct, but it's not, it truly is multi-generational. And um, you see, you see everybody, on a cruise, especially in the summertime, you'll see, yep. you know, every, every age group on the our planet. Demographics, our demographics are dropping like a rock. Yep. Not see it's us. A great way to see Europe and anywhere else in the world. It really, really is. It's a fantastic way to travel. Okay. But we've got bicycles on board. All right. <laughs> tours included. We've got um, culinary tours included. Now that's pulling the demographics down. We even have a wellness host on every ship the wellness host is doing like a stretching class in the morning maybe a yoga class they tried one on us a, a year ago it was called champagne yoga you oh i like the, the idea of that <laughs> and then you got to drink it or they might be line dancing up on the sun deck that's with champagne with all, <laughs> champagne. Say and it's so I sadly we're getting to the end of the show, but I just want to say are. that she has seen a family with Adventures by Disney on AMA and they loved it. And yeah. a family with teenagers on the Christmas markets and they loved it as well. So it is certainly a multi-generational for the whole family experience. Everybody can go their own way. I mean, yeah, they, that's the other thing too. Yeah. You go out and take the bicycles on their own. Uh, the younger kids can tell, take a tour. The parent, everybody meets back at lunch and at dinner. You can go your own pace. It's amazing. It really is a great way to travel. And Kath, I want to have you back again next year after we get through the first of the year and in 2021, and you can share more of the fabulous, maybe tulips and all of that. That would be delightful. We would love to have you back. So I want to thank you, Kathy, so, so much for sharing Christmas markets with us. And AMA means love, just in case anybody ever didn't know that. AMA means love. And thank you so much for sharing everything with us, Kath. 
Uh, Janine and I are taking the rest of the year off from our shows. We will be returning on January 7th with brand new guests and a few surprises coming yeah. up next year as well, which we're super excited. But that's just a tease. That's all we're going to do. So I want to wish everyone a happy holiday. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. And Janine, sign us out. So and one quick thing, don't forget if you are a Gen X woman or a young baby boomer, come join us in the Women with Wander Wanderlust Tribe. I will drop the link below. And we have a ton of fun. You know, we're not so much, fun. much right now, but we have a blast and we would love to see you there. So until we can all travel again, keep dreaming about travel and finding joy close to home. Happy holidays. Thank you, Kathy. Happy New Year, everybody. Cheers. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas.